Today, Tears of the Kingdom did something completely unprecedented. Maybe it won't surprise you guys, but it certainly surprised me. And I think it creates a grander conversation we need to have about where Tears of the Kingdom is going in the future. Oh man, it's going to be glorious. But I first want to give a shout out to channel partner Into the AM. They are having a 4th of July sale going on right now, 20 to 80% off. I'm actually wearing one of their shirts right now. They are awesome. They are pre-shrunk. They're super soft. They have some of the best prints in the industry. You can see some of their new arrivals over here when we click on and open. Oh man, look at all this. We have the Lunar Molotov and the Pagoda shirt. You can just scroll down and see all these amazing designs. These basic tees I'm wearing as undershirts or sometimes over shirts all the time. You guys have probably seen me wear some of those in several of my videos. I absolutely love what Into the AM has going on. And again, they have this 4th of July site-wide sale, 20 to 80 percent off. You can also use code Nintendo Prime 10 to get an additional 10% off. In fact, go ahead and click on the link down in the description to go ahead and get yourself your own Into the AM merch. <laughs> All right, folks, so we need to talk about Tears of the Kingdom because it's just wild right now. You guys know that Tears of the Kingdom sales have been absolutely nuts. It's pretty much topped the charts in Japan every single week but once. And the same is basically true in the UK, except something weird happened in the UK sales charts that we need to point out because it was taken now. Like Final Fantasy 16 took out Tears of the Kingdom last week. Now, yeah, I'm sure you can guess by now, Tears of the Kingdom went back up to number one, but it's how it got back to number one that to me is most surprising. So we're getting this information from Christopher Dring, who tracks all the sales over in the UK, and it says, Zelda sales are up 18%. It's back at number one in the UK box charts, replacing Final Fantasy, which was only number one for a week, down 78%. AEW is the highest new entry at number three, with its sales 40% lower than WWE 2K23, which isn't that bad for a brand new game. Of course, the AEW game isn't exactly very good, according to reviews anyways. Uh, Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life debuted at number seven. And what's important here is that Story of Seasons is actually a multi-platform release. The first time Story of Seasons has ever been multi-platform. However, we did find out 89% of those sales were on Switch. So despite being multi-platform, it's the Switch audience that really cares the most about it. And he mentions that he fully intends to get both of those at some point. I'm not sure what both of those means. I, I don't know if you saw the story of seasons. I mean, he mentions like three games. So I'm not, I'm not really sure. That I mean, I'm assuming he has Tears of the Kingdom. But what I want to focus on is actually this part here where it says the Zelda sales are up 18%. This to me is fascinating because nothing really happened. There wasn't a new anything that really would have boosted Switch sales and caused people to maybe pick up Tears of the Kingdom. The game came out, you know, gosh, it's it's been a bit now, right? It came out in May. And when you think about when it released and we're actually in July, you know, six, seven, eight weeks later, and it's back up to number one again and really has been at number one most of this time. But going back to number one by increasing sales by 18%, this is unheard of. It's unprecedented territory. So unprecedented that we actually need to talk about something else related to Tears of the Kingdom. And that is because, you know what, in celebration of this, I decided to do a new Tears of the Kingdom related giveaway courtesy of Satisfy. We are going to give away one of these Mythic Edition Zen Grip Pros. Uh, they, you know, looks pretty great. It helps make your Switch just that much better to use in portable mode. Of course, you do have to take it off to put it in the dock. But man, does it look really good. It goes really well with pretty much any Switch, especially like the white Joy-Con Switch OLED. But it also obviously is specifically designed to look really really good with the special edition Zelda OLED. And I'm really, really happy uh, that we're able to give one of these away. In fact, let me show you mine uh, because you can see mine right here. I got my own and uh, it's pretty badass. I really like it a lot. Oh, but we're not done because here is yours. In fact, this is the exact one that we're giving away. You can still see Right here, the tape is still on. It has not been taken off. This is a brand new Zenkin Pro. This is what we're giving away. You can go down to a link down in the description. Uh, all I really ask is that you guys be subscribed to the channel. That's it. That's it. Like, that's all that you need to do to be entered. Uh, thank you so much for all of your support and helping us get here. We're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. But let's get back to talking about Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Because I am in this situation with Tears of the Kingdom where I'm not really sure what's going to make this train stop. 
Look, Breath of the Wild was an evergreen title, and it sold forever and ever and ever and ever again, right? It just didn't stop selling. But here's the problem with it not stopping selling. It never really gained sales until years later, right? It just sort of fell off and then maintained at a certain sales number for a long time. And then every holiday you'd see a boost or every major Switch game release, you'd see another boost. But this thing is being boosted without a new major Switch game coming out. Nine know Story of Seasons is nice, but it's not a major big release for Nintendo. So it's not something that you would think, oh, 18% increase to already the best selling game. Usually it would be, hey, here's a new number one selling Mario game and that boosted Tears of the Kingdom back into the top 10. But Tears of the Kingdom won't relinquish the number one spot. Final Fantasy 16, remember, lots of people out there claiming, oh, it should, it's clearly game of the year. It's clearly better than Zelda. And outside of obviously finishing eight points lower on Metacritic and being nowhere close to being the highest rated game ever on Open Critic, it's interesting to think about it and go, but but it's not even selling that well. Now, as a caveat, there are a hell of a lot more Nintendo Switches on the market than there are PlayStation 5s. So to expect those sort of sales, you know, 10 million plus sales or whatever today on PlayStation 5 versus that, it, it, it's really not realistic. And now, maybe if it had also been on PlayStation 4, but here's the thing. Tears of the Kingdom is a unique beast for Nintendo. It's, you know, we, we've been told that, you know, Zelda games are now doing Pokemon numbers, but this is beyond Pokemon numbers because Pokemon sales would still be declining right now, right? They get most of their sales in the first four weeks. It would literally might not, if it is in the top 10, it'd be at the bottom of the top 10 by now. Zelda just keeps sitting at number one and increasing sales like, you know, two months out is insane, so where does this Tears of the Kingdom hype train stop? I don't know. Maybe this game is still going to be number one heading into Mario? Like, is Mario Wonder going to be the game that for multiple weeks keeps Tears of the Kingdom from being number one in the UK? What's going to stop it? It just increased in sales. You figure Tears of the Kingdom would naturally lose number one because it's going to keep decreasing in sales. But then the sales bump by 18%, and you go, wait a second. The sales are going up? What what stops this train? Nothing. At least that seems to be the indication at this point. Anyways, what I need to do is let you guys go. I got another video I want to get to that's let's just say it's a bit it's going to be a bit ranty but also I think a bit funny and I think we're all going to have a lot of fun with it. It does deal with certain aspects of the Zelda fan base. Again, not applicable to a majority of you wonderful people out there, but it's going to be a fun conversation. I teased it a little bit on Twitter last night. You guys are awesome and amazing. I got to get to work on my next video, so I'll catch you guys in that next video.